I'm just going to provide a quick introduction to uh, Ronin, um, and then Hector is going to do a quick uh, demonstration with some of the uh, s uh, screenshots we have for the, uh, for the system. So Ronin is a complete situational awareness uh, data fusion uh, system. It's interoperable with uh, NetWarrior, ATAC, and also Kershaw on target systems. Um, we've integrated it into a number of uh, different um, technology uh, partners. We've worked with uh, different radios. Uh, we've worked with Harris, uh, Trellis Web, Persistent, also some of the, uh, the legacy radio types such as uh, Kodan, Motorola and Hytera, which uh, sort of critical capability for what we're doing where if we're, w we're working with uh, coalition uh, partners, indigenous forces, they don't tend to have uh, Harris radios, whether it be due to uh, ITAR or other issues. So we can provide a system that works with their existing radios. And because we have what we call Ronin Connect, uh, which is part of the, the Ronin SA suite, we actually have software specifically for different types of radios. So every time that we, we connect to a different radio, we don't have to go uh, rewrite software for that. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Hector, and he will take you through some of the, the screens. Uh, good afternoon. So just quick, uh, so Ronin SA is uh, pretty much, think of it as Facebook for targets on, a, on the battlefield, okay? So what we have is a simple layout. You see your markers. You see your positions in the blue. And you have the users uh, tab, and then you have location. Next slide. And basically just touching the tab and swiping up, uh, you can move the bottom half. Basically, you drop the pin, a pin, and you can rename that pin you just dropped. Next slide. Um, normally, you would see marker, a title, um, who dropped it, and you can put it, a description on that marker as well. So you don't have marker one, marker two, marker three. You can actually name them. Next slide. So the right here, all this showing is you can interact from one person to another on your network. And down below, you see where it says uh, write your message. So it's always, it's, it's user friendly, just like your you know, daily uh, phone app, texting back and forth. So you can show location by pushing that, and it'll bring you to the, that person's location on the map. Next slide. Standard keyboard, nothing's changed. Why well, change it if it, you know, if it works? Uh, right here, you can do freehand, or you can do uh, you know, squares or um, polygons by a map tool. You can do your routes, and you can drop pin drops along the way. Next slide. So the compass, um, instead of going out from the uh, actual situation awareness app, we built the compass right on top of it. So you just hit, you hit the icon, and you hit the compass, and it actually orientates you which way you want to go uh, to that icon. Um, with that, it also gives you the range and bearing, and we can do this in you know mills, grids, um, degrees. So uh, some of the areas that we've deployed uh, Ronin, uh, we've a number of US programs uh, through SOCOM, also through uh, the Marine Corps. Uh, we've also worked with uh, coalition partners, uh, specifically in the UK. We've just completed the, uh, the UK MOD uh, AWE uh, warfare experiment, uh, which was very successful for us. We worked with uh, a different, uh, some different partners. Um, we've also been involved in Tajikistan uh, on the Afghan border, where we, we've been working with the, uh, the Afghan border guards to provide basically a border security system, and specifically working with, it's, it's a sensor-based program, we're integrating the, uh, the sensors, we're taking those triggers, we're sending video and imagery uh, to, a, to a forward operating base, and from there, basically a human operator is then able to deploy patrols to a specific area. Based on that, when, the, when we deploy, or when the patrols deploy, they're set up, they're set up in a peer-to-peer -peer network, so they're not dependent upon a server. We do have a server application, which then provides the ability to uh, deliver uh, common operational picture information, basically COP feeds up to other FOBs or up to higher headquarters. And uh, sort of working with, in, in that peer-to-peer -peer, um, 
uh, architecture. We're not dependent on service, so we can do synchronization between the uh, patrols uh, that if they, if, they, if they don't hit the server, that they're completely independent, that they still have that SA data, they can still do track plans, um, they can still get caught, um, and basically work independently, and then once they, if, when, as of when the operation dictates, they hit the server, then we can send COP data up to the higher headquarters. So what we're looking to do with, with Ronin is really provide a, 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 an SA data package for expeditionary operations that we can deliver to, call it disadvantaged uh, local friendly forces. They don't have the, the best in technology, but we're able to work with their, with their existing radios and basically provide uh, effective situational awareness and uh, data on the ground. And sort of one of the areas that we've been very successful is just understanding the, the, uh, the workflow and being able to integrate the SA package into their existing technology and uh, adjacent technologies on the ground. I think we've got one more slide. Yeah. So just in summary, basically Ronin provides interoperability. Uh, we can talk to radios, different devices. We work with people like GTAC. Um, we can work with biomedical, we can wor work with uh, sensors, we can also integrate into the CAN bus of uh, vehicle systems. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer operations, so we're not dependent upon a server, but we can, we also provide a server application for COP feeds up to higher headquarters. Um, we, it's a non-routing data at rest uh, security uh, accredited. And then we have a number of uh, hardware mounting devices, both for the, uh, the man, man soldier, um, body borne vehicle, and uh, dismounted. As, and really, sort of, we continue to evolve uh, as, an, as an interoperable platform uh, with NetWarrior, with ATAC. So I think that's about it. Be happy to take any questions. I have a question. Uh, Ron Langhams from Soft AT and L S and T. Your platform for integration and bridging the gap over these radios is it? Uh, does it require any adapters that have to be written? How does it? Uh, how does it function off of that? And then the other question I have is uh, big data analytics. Uh, looking for something along the lines of if you have a large portion of data, you wanted to analyze it quickly and pull out pertinent information, uh, but it would have to be on the spot because you couldn't you know, push it over a link or anything sure. like that. Do but you have anything along those lines? Yeah. So those two I'll, are separate I'll questions. Sure. So just the second part of the question there, what we can do, we have a pre-mission and in-mission mode so that in pre-mission mode, specifically if we, uh, prior to deployment, um, we can actually provide the video and uh, uh, video uh, imagery streams into, into the soldier before he deploys. Once he is deployed, it's then really dependent upon the radio link. So if we're using trellisware or we've got basically high, high data throughput uh, uh, ability through the radio, then we can send video and other feeds. If we're not and we're working with like HF or uh, sort of other disadvantaged radio platforms, then it, it, it is limited and we actually throttle down the data throughput so that we give the useful data to the, uh, to the guy on the ground. Well, I'll let Hector talk about the so Ronin quick, Connect. Quick with you, a question. Uh, so connecting the radio, we can connect to the IP addresses of the radio, it connects through the, through, through the app itself, so it's not no magic cable or anything. So we interface with that so we can get, if the radio has a hard drive, we can interact that, just like a computer does with the radio, but we're using the Android device. Um, also, we have a way, we have a server, uh, like a tactical app store, we can then demonstrate, or demonstrate information to and from uh, if, if the user's around the tactical network as well. Okay. I think we're out of time here. Thank you. Okay, thank you.